And, and Josh Ritter, uh, very interesting here, because in that situation, uh, Mr. Uh, Jacobson came out and, and took the dog and got the dog away from Brian Williams. That didn't happen in the Dieterle case here. So it seems to me there's a little bit for uh, both, but more for the defense with this witness. Your thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. I think this is very helpful to the defense, not in so much proving Dieter Lee's mindset, but in pro uh, uh, proving Jacobson's mindset and what he knew about that dog and the fears that he had of the dog. The dog obviously had some behavioral issues, and it sounds like he was trying to address that and trying to get the dog acclimated. And we see these pictures of the dog where it looks you know, very calm and loving, and I'm sure he was a, you know, a very sweet dog. 90% of the time, but it's still an animal. And if they're reacting this way to people and you don't have that under control or you don't have them on a leash, then some of that responsibility lies at your feet uh, for how this animal behaves. And it sounds like he was doing his best but hadn't gotten any formal training for him. And if you're the defense in this case, you're going to really pound home those points about, listen, this is your dog. You don't know its history. You believe it has a history for violence. You've seen scars on the dog. You've seen the dog react to people in other ways. And you didn't do enough to stop that by either having the dog restrained with a leash or a crate or having the dog properly trained.